Epicurean comes from the philosopher Epicurus and he was one of the first philosophers to say life is about living not about living for life after death and so all of this kind of evolved into this notion that we should create a space that's connected to nature connected to art and allowing people to enjoy themselves The Fibonacci series is a fascinating pattern that mathematicians have sort of discovered has an incredible connection with nature. Given the fact that we're sculpting a space within the ship that really speaks to nature, we were interested in sort of understanding the proportions and the scale of things as we were designing it. Eden is a space that really is a defining space for the ship. It will have performance, it will have food and beverage, it will have fantastic views of the ocean, it's a lounge. However, everything is raised to the level of an art. We didn't want to create a static room. We really wanted a space that was dynamic and that in order to experience it, you had to move through it. The ramp and the whole notion of the spiraling effect and creating almost this continuous path was the way we wanted people to find all of those things that were in the space. Eden is going to engage all of the senses. Every single guest will come out with a memory, not just tied to the visual or the taste of the food, but also tactile, smells, sounds, everything. The interior designer for the space is Patricia Urquiola and Urquiola Studio, her office in Milan. She really understood the concept even before we began. The intent of the proposal was that I, I created a kind of land inside a ship that I love from the beginning. Then I said, how can we propose a no conventional space, a no traditional space? The idea was to connect two things, plants, nature, the sea. One thing was the, the natural and fantastic idea of day and night, the circularity, the, the concept of time. I'm thinking how a space like this will be interesting in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, and how it could evolve. I thought was very interesting and challenging question. During the daytime, the space will be a place of some serenity. The Eden Cafe will be open, go relax and read a book. Other people can go to the, to the space and just chill out. You can rest and look at the ocean, just enjoying the incredible view. Because it is an outward facing space, you're always wanting to look out and watch the coastline as it recedes. You see a glass wall that's three decks high, that's the full width of the ship. It's quite awe inspiring. Later in the afternoon, when everyone's coming back to the ship, there's a certain euphoria and a desire to sort of have a drink and be a little more social. You go downstairs and in the afternoon you can do workshops uh, with the show kitchen. People can go down and participate in an experience where they can learn how foods are prepared. The bar will be more active. Your garnishes are growing behind you in the library of plants. And so then to make it a performance, the bartenders can climb up ladders and retrieve that little sprig and then bring it down and flake it off into your drink. And then, uh, the rest of the evening, we were thinking that uh, a kind of sinful ambience could be the, the right thing. At night, the entire space comes to life. And so it really turns from an outward-facing space to an inward-looking space. The restaurant isn't a individual entity within the space. It's part of the experience. One of the things that we're looking at with Eden Restaurant is how to do things differently. It's a blend of not only culinary offerings, but also entertainment and performance art. It has to be seamless. The whole thing has to be seamless. Guests are going to descend into the space, and the first course that they're going to be getting is in the kitchen. We have this beautiful open kitchen that lends to uh, sort of the air of theater. Once they sit down, we want there to be some sort of interaction between the guest and the dish. For instance, one of the dishes that we're going to be featuring is a sea urchin. We're setting this in a glass cone over a bowl of live fish. I'm pulling the dish descending frost. So we're taking some dry ice and we're shaving this over a microplane. 
and that descends over the dish. So it really creates a dish that's a little bit more magical and experiential. And then once they're concluded with their meal, they'll be led out of Eden and brought somewhere up on the ramp and have a, a sweet, a confection, or a drink. There's always going to be some element of surprise. And guests have to leave saying, well, that was something that I've never experienced before. That was absolutely outstanding, and I want to come back. I think when people think of uh, traditional cruise entertainment, there's a very specific image that people have in mind. Exciting thing about this is uh, we've actually been invited, I think, to break so many of the rules. We could create a performance that was sort of going to engage them, was going to draw them into places where they wouldn't normally go on their own. The way the space works as a continuous flow also creates incredibly varied number of staging opportunities. There is no set place. The way into the experience is going to be guided almost literally by hand by these characters that we're referring to as the Edenists. It's literally Eden come to life. You're not sure whether you're in the performance or watching the performance. So it's not just the Edenists, it's not just the food and beverage team, it's not just the chefs, but they're all creating this beautiful orchestrated sort of dance together. In Eden, there is no separating one aspect of the experience from the other. The food is not something that is presented as an aside. I think is going to strike them in such a way that they're going to be coming back looking for more of it. Thinking outside of the box and creating those experiences are what people walk away with going, that ship was completely different. And Eden is that space. People are gonna come away from Eden saying there's nothing like it, on land or on a ship.